Hi, this is Arielle from Sphinx Financial Planning. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a template in MailChimp to use for your email campaigns. If you're watching this on mobile, I suggest you turn your phone sideways in order to enlarge the video. When you log into your account, you should see this screen. Go ahead and hit the arrow or hover over it on the right-hand side and click on Dashboard. Once your dashboard loads, on the top left, you'll see a link that says Templates, and then hit Content Manager. You should see something that looks like this, since you won't probably have any files already uploaded. Because it's almost Halloween, I'm going to do something quite a little fun. I'm going to use a skeleton image. All right, great. Once it's uploaded, go ahead and click the image and you'll see a drop down arrow next to the view details button. Click the down arrow and then hit set my logo. That will actually make your logo default to this little tab right here. That way, once you have more images uploaded to your file vault, you'll be able to quickly and easily find your logo. Go ahead and hit the X in the top right hand corner and then hit create template. You have three different options for creating a template. You can use a blank preset layout. You can code your own template if you have HTML knowledge or you can use a theme. That's the same thing as a layout but with preset colors and images. I suggest you pick one that you like the layout of um, and you like the design of. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to use the art newsletter template, but again, feel free to pick any one that you like the, the way it looks. Don't focus too much on the colors and the fonts and the images, focus more on the design and the flow of the, image, or of the email itself. So once that loads, you'll see something that looks like this. Let's focus on the header first. So click design in the top right hand corner and then click header and you can either remove the image or you can replace it with one of your own. If you use an image you can also change the size, the position, and specify whether it repeats. Cover means that it will fill the space. Contain means that the image the full image will be fit into the space whether or not it covers the entire space. And auto means that the system or the computer will automatically choose for you. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. I'm just going to change the fallback color. So whether or not you have an image, the fallback color, um, you can specify what that is. And that's what you'll see if your image either doesn't show up, which might happen depending on the email client your client is using. Um, if they're looking at it in a browser, depending on what browser it is, and if the image doesn't fit the whole space, sometimes you'll see a piece of the fallback color but not the entire um, section will be filled with it. So I'm going to change that to a yellow. And this is a good opportunity to ask your designer if you have one for a design document specifying your logos, your colors, your text, uh, fonts, etc., your style document, so to speak. So after we've changed the color, you can also change the font if you'd like. We'll, get to, we'll actually get to that in a second. Um, go ahead and click on the logo, and you can replace that with your own logo. I'll just use the one that we just uploaded can hit my logo on the bottom left, or since it's probably the only image you have, just hit my files and that will be fine. And then we can change the header text. And you can also change the style, the color, the size, the positioning, etc. When you're done, hit save and close. And then Scroll down just a little bit. This is the main body of the email. You'll see that there are different 
segments or different pieces of content, you can rearrange these by hovering over the box and using this square of dots, so to speak, to drag and reorder those pieces. You see there's this red line, that's a divider content piece. If you hit the little pencil on the top right, you can edit it, you can change the amount of padding, that's the white space around it. You can change the color, which I will actually do. I'm going to make that blue. And you can add a background to it. You can also choose whether you want it to be a solid, dash, dotted, double, grooved, ridge, inset, outset, or blank divider. This is a really, really good thing to use when spacing out the content of your email to put a, just a blank, clean, colorless divider. Go ahead and hit save and close. And then you can change the text that's in this section. Because this is a template that you're going to be using for multiple emails, I suggest not putting anything content-wise in here. I would say go ahead and enter your signature and then leave the rest blank for now. And then you can edit and add additional content for each message that you create within a campaign, which I'll show you how to do in the next video. So I'll just put a little signature here and save and close. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this content block because I don't really need it. Okay, great. So if you go to back to the design on the top right hand side, you'll see that there's a list or a tab for upper columns and lower columns. Because the background in this section is all white, it's hard to tell where one begins and one ends, although you can see the division between the upper column and the lower column here. So, so that we can see where, these, where the body stops and where the columns start, I'm just gonna change the background of this column to black. And there you go, now that it's a different color, you can actually see that this is a completely different section from the body of the email. I personally like to use the upper column for my main call to action. This is typically a button that tells the client or the customer what the very next step I want them to do is, and then use the up, or rather the lower column for my secondary call to action. Um, you can change the background um, color or add an image, either by going to the design column and selecting which one you want to edit, or if you hover over the bottom left, you get a miniature quick menu, so to speak, where you can change those two things. But then if you want to change the text, the default text, um, or any other design elements, go to the design col column and then hit the upper or lower column. So if you don't want to utilize the upper and the lower columns, or if you just want to utilize one, you can actually delete the content and you'll see something that looks like this, where it says drop content blocks here. And if you change the color to match the background of the previous section, you won't be able to see, this will be really small and shrunken down, there won't be a large gap of space. You won't be able to know that there's a separate segment here, it won't really matter, it'll just kind of be disregarded. Um, so, for example, um, one of the other options that you can do is you can use this upper column to share posts, like blog posts that relate to the content of your email. So for example, if you're doing an educational campaign and the subject is credit, you can share three blog posts that are related to credit that you've written. It's good because it relates to the content of the email and it gets the client or the customer back to your website, which increases your traffic and helps your search engine optimization. And then you can use a slower section to highlight recent blog posts that are maybe not necessarily related to the topic at hand. You can put buttons, you can put other content, um, and you can change the colors, the texts, etc. Finally, we come down to the very bottom, and that's where the footer is. Leave all of this information alone. This is something that MailChimp requires you to have, the unsubscribe button um, and your 
monkey rewards, that's what they call the little logo, the MailChimp logo, if you're on a free account. If you take this out, it'll probably automatically add it back in for you, but it's just a good idea to just leave it alone and not have to play around with it. You could get in trouble if you try and override that and you really just don't want to do that. Um, but you can change the color or add an image. So I'm just going to make this one black and there you have it. Last but not least, if you want to add additional content aside from what's already there, click the content tab in the top right and you can pick from the menu. You have text, box text, dividers, images, groups of images, image cards, image captions, social share, social follow, button, footer, code, and video. I suggest either putting your social share or your social follow links. If you drag and drop the content, you can change the links. So for example, it would be facebook.com slash things financial. If I can type, that would be great. <laughs> and go ahead and hit save and close. Or you can actually change the style, the layout, um, and then the icon style under the settings menu. You can pick either solid or outlined, and then you'll have different options for colors. Um, etc. And then just hit save and close when you're done and it'll bring you back. And in my next video, like I mentioned, I'm going to show you how to use this template to create a blog post email campaign that automatically sends your subscribers new posts according to the schedule you set. So check it out. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me and I will gladly clarify for you. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, comment, and let me know what you thought, and subscribe to our channel by hitting the red button below. See you next time.